Today we're going to be looking at the most simplistic form of a line follower. It's a great project for a child who has never done any programming or any building of robots before. Because a line follower in this most simplistic form is a very easy robot to build and very easy code to write. First we'll have a look at the robot. The robot is what they call the basic simple bot design. It just has two motors with one wheel attached to each motor and then a follow along wheel at the back, a little caster type wheel. And basically how the robot works is, if you give turn both wheels at the same speed, the robot will drive straight forward. If you turn one wheel quicker than the other wheel, the robot as it goes forward will turn that way. If you drive that wheel there quicker than that wheel there, and as it goes forward, it'll turn that way. So we can make the, the robot go where we want by just controlling the power to the wheels. I have also added to the simple bot just a light sensor out the front. The job of the light sensor is to read where we are in relation to the line so we know which way we're going to steer. Basically how we're going to have it is we're going to get the robot to follow the boundary between the black and the white just like it is now. It doesn't actually follow the line like most people think, it actually follows the boundary between the white and the black. And what's going to happen is we're going to use the sensor to tell us whether we're over the white or we're over the black. And basically if we want to be there and the sensor's telling us we're over the white, it means the robot needs to turn that way to come back again. It needs to turn around to come back again. If it goes over the black, it means it's too far in that direction and it needs to turn back out again. And we can just use that. And what that means is, as the robot comes along, it'll follow along up there. As it gets off the end here, it will run onto the black. As it runs onto the black, it knows it needs to turn that way. As it comes across the end here, it starts to run off onto the white. It knows that it needs to turn back again this way. And that's a very, very simple, easy way of making a line following robot. Okay, let's have a look at the code. Now, as we explained before, it works by, if it's over the white, it turns to the left. If it's over the black, it turns to the right. And then it just does that over and over and over and over. So to get the code to do that, we're going to get a loop, which means it's going to do it over and over and over. Set the loop for infinity so it just does it forevermore. Inside the loop, we're going to put a switch that tests whether it's over the white or over the black. If it's over the white, we turn to the left. If it's over the black, we turn to the right. Now to get the switch to test whether we're over the white or the black, we will set the switch to color sensor, compare reflective light intensity. So the reflected light intensity will tell you how bright or how dark the object you're over. Not what color it is, but how bright or dark it is. And we're going to get it to compare. And we're going to get it to compare, is it larger than 50%? Because if, it's, if we get larger than 50% reflected light, it means it must be over the white or over something very bright. If it's not larger than 50%, then it must be over something quite dark, i.e. over the black. So we'll have the switch set to um, color sensor, compare reflected light intensity to more than 50. And then on the, that means that if it's over the white, it will come back positive on the switch and go to the top side. If it's not over the white, it will go down to the bottom side. If it's not over the white, it must mean that it's over the black. So on the top side, we're going to use the steering block to steer. And we're going to turn it on for infinity. We're just going to turn the motor on and we're going to set the amount of steering we want to the left and we're going to set the motor power and make sure you have the correct ports. All right? Mine is set to A and D because my left motor is plugged into port A and my right motor is plugged into port D. All right? So at the moment I have it set to turn at 52 and go at a speed of 30. When you're first starting always use lower speeds and make the robot work well in slow motion then as you get the robot to work well you can increase the speed now when we set the turning how much we need to turn will depend upon how wiggly the line we are over All right here's our um, simple ro uh, line following robot in action 
and basically he's wiggling backwards and forwards depending whether he's over the black and white following the line. And you'll come up to the corner and you'll follow it around the corner. You can see I don't have him going too fast for the moment. I've got him nice and slow and I've also got him wiggling a fair bit to make sure he doesn't lose the line. All right, later on we're going to have a look at a couple of videos of what happens as you change the amount the robot wiggles. I'm going to mainly stick to the one speed of the motors for the moment, just going to be changing the amount that it turns. I've done a bit of testing and I know if I wiggle this much, it definitely makes it around all the corners, including the tight little corners coming up. So that corner's a little bit tight, but not that tight. When we come down here, we actually have quite a tight turn. And if you don't have the robot wiggling fairly tight, he falls off the corners on those really tight turns. That's about the tightest turn that's in the whole um, line I have going. Okay, Okay. what I've done now is I've got the same robot, stall the motor speed exactly the same. I've just made it turn fractionally less how tight it's turning. So because it's not turning quite as tight, it appears to be going much faster. The reason it's going faster isn't because I'm turning the motors faster, it's because I'm turning less. So the, the robot goes much, much faster. But what happens is he gets to the point that he wants to fall off the line. So we'll have a little bit of a look at that again. The line's not too bendy with how much I've got him turned, he will stay on. But if I get any line that's bent a little bit too tight, as this one here is just that little bit tighter, it falls off the line. So that what I've done on this last one, I've actually turned the, the amount it steers down quite a lot. Um, what you'll find is that if you steer quite small, it means the robot goes much faster because it's not turning much and it works quite well on a line that doesn't curve much but as soon as he gets to any curves he'll get to the point he will run off quite quick so motor speed exactly the same just less turning the robot appears to go much quicker but he gets to the corners and he falls off 